Wash, rinse, repeat. That is the easiest way that I can describe what it feels like going through a bear market into a bull market and back again. So welcome everybody to today's live stream. I know we've been talking about and hearing a lot about this October and how great it's gonna be. And we're gonna go to the moon. It's gonna be fantastic. So you're like, what the heck is going on? Let's talk about it. So first of all, I don't know if you knew this, but today is a pretty good day for the Bitcoin ETF. And it's a, it's a good day for a lot of things, which makes things not add up if you're really look, taking a look at price action in a myopic view. But if we take a look at the net Bitcoin ETF flows, we're at an all-time high. We are at an all-time high of Bitcoin ETF flows into the market. That means there is a lot of people, a lot of institutional demand, investors themselves, saying, I would like a piece of that ETF. I would like to buy this from... BlackRock or for whoever else that's out there, uh, Grayscale or whatnot, if they're doing it. But at some point, you have to think to yourself, well, why is it uh, the money really not kind of flowing in? It is just a little bit of a, of, of a sidestep. So we look at the Bitcoin ETF and that is at an all time high. And again, this is net flows. So as Grayscale dumps their, their portion, you have other people like Fidelity, like the BlackRocks picking up the, up the slack as they have their customers buying in. And then what about the Ethereum ETF? Well, there was a great tweet post from Nate Garassi, I think I said that right, president of ETF store, host of ETF Prime. And he says, hey, iShares from BlackRock, Ethereum ETF, the Ethereum ETF eclipses $1 billion in assets. That means that they are now in the top 20% of all 3,700 plus ETFs. Let me say that again. They're in the top 20% of all ETFs and they did it in two months. And that's pretty good until you look at the total flows. Now the total flows, uh, here's BlackRock right here. Yeah, they're over a billion, 1.1 to be exact. So congratulations to them. But as far as total flows, we're still at negative 522. And that's, of course, thanks to Grayscale dumping. And that's their God-given right. Have fun. So we see all these things. We hear about these, uh, these great opportunities. We hear about the macro environment. They talk about how the Fed has been cutting rates. And we also heard about how uh, China is actually turning on the money printer. Quantitative easing is actually happening here as well. We're seeing rates are going to be cut in November and December. And of course, what does that mean for us today? Here we go. And this is the price action. So people will look at this today. And of course, if you haven't been around too long, you look at this and go, this is awful. October, you bunch of liars. How dare you even tell me that? And of course, I get your point. If you haven't, if you've been here for like the last, I don't know, just got here two, four months. And of course, today we're down 3.3%. Let's see, let's refresh. Maybe we're... Oh, no, we went down even further. Congratulations. We did it. We went down even further in the last 15 minutes. Amazing. So what gives, Rob? Well, first of all, October's not here yet. I still think we're uh, in a pretty good position. But I want you to back up and remember this. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because it's like beating a dead horse. If you go back four years into the last halving cycle in 2020, I want to show you what it was like in July. July 1st, 2020 going into August and September. We were at $9,000 for the Bitcoin price and we skyrocketed all the way to 12,000. That's a pretty good time frame in like 45 days or whatever it was. It went from July, wow, 30 days, excuse me, $12,000. And then what happened? Everybody was really happy and great. And like, hey, the train's never gonna stop. And of course, what happens? We go from 12,000 right down to 10,000, 125. Just like that. So you're looking at 15% or whatever else it is. Correct me in the comment section, but it's a little bit of a loss. And again, you don't lose unless you sell, but these are normal occurrences. So I just want to remind everybody about that, about, yeah, today isn't the greatest day. We're down 3.4% or 3.6, boo-hoo. 
but that's the price action. So just stick around. I think you're going to like where we're going to go. And I think there's some reasons why you're going to like that. So let's talk about this. Clean Spark. And I was having a discussion with a golfer before, before we started the, uh, the live stream. And I got to tell you, like, I'm not a big fan of predictions, price predictions. I'm not even a fan of the CEO of CleanSpark making predictions because they're all just made up numbers. That's great. And when you hear price predictions, especially from people in the industry, you know, it's just a, they're trying to do a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I'm not going to give this too much gravitas and really put a lot of bearing into it. It's a guy who's doing good things in the Bitcoin mining space and he wants $200,000. And I'm like, I was reading this at first. I'm like, this is just somebody who wants the price to go up, obviously. Now, if I heard like somebody like Dave Ramsey come out or I heard somebody like Warren Buffett come out and go, you know what, Bitcoin to 200,000, I would probably do a video on that. But when the CleanSpark CEO for Bitcoin mining does it, I don't really care too much. However, there are great nuggets of information to be gleaned from what he talks about. So I just wanna go over this real quick. So I thought it was quite interesting. Ah, and again, CleanSpark CEO states, based on my current analysis, I believe we could see Bitcoin peak just under $200,000 sometime in the next 18 months. That'll likely be a peak, but I do think we'll see a rapid jump and then hopefully an extended elongated period of it being up before we re revisit a bear cycle. I got to tell you, that last part is very true. What goes up must come down. Nothing chops sideways forever, unless you're a Cardano and XRP. Just kidding. Uh, and nothing goes up forever. Nothing goes down forever. So just like what he says here, he's absolutely right. It will. 200,000? Yeah, maybe. Who knows? There's indicators for that. But I like this last part as a reminder that, hey, bull markets last for a finite amount of time and bear markets do as well. And then he, he makes some good points, though, about this one. I believe this as well. Bradford, CEO, also saw November's U.S. presidential election impacting, impacting Bitcoin's price but said it was less about who wins and more about the election being over, helping to reduce uncertainty. Now on this channel, if you've watched any length of time, you know I've said that many a time. It's not so much about the winner or the loser, it's just about the market wants to have some kind of foresight to see where exactly we're going and the ambiguity is gone. Like if they come out and say, oh, we got this lady, now we know what the market's gonna do, we'll just adjust accordingly. Oh, oh, we got this guy. We know what he's going to do. So what does adjust accordingly? They don't want ambiguity. They don't want any kind of any kind of bumps in the road, as long as they know who it is. And that's why I've said, and we've talked about this many a times, after November election, usually we start to see a little bit more of a takeoff. So October, if it goes up, great. If it doesn't, eh, I still think it's going to go up, but I still see some good things in the horizon. And then to finish up, and this was also interesting because you always hear, and I talk about this, time in the market is better than timing the market. But this really concreted the idea of why I see or why we see some volatility and a lot of volatility in Bitcoin. It's because these guys got to sell. Bitcoin miners are great. They're here to keep the network up. They're here to drive innovation, all that great stuff. But they have to sell. And he says it perfectly. Bradford said it was about timing the market effectively. He highlighted Clean Spark's strategy of selling near peaks and accumulating mined Bitcoin in downturns. That's pretty good. He says the company has held 97% of its mined Bitcoin since June 2023, with its holdings currently approaching 8,000 Bitcoin. But they intend to sell in future bull markets to fund non dilutive growth. All I'm saying here is this. If the CEO for a major Bitcoin mining operation, not the biggest, obviously, but a pretty big player in the game, is saying, look, we have to sell. And our job here is to time the market somewhat effectively as much as we possibly can. If they can do that, just know that they're going to be out there selling like crazy because they know that the bear market's coming. I want you to remember that in the back of your head when you're thinking to yourself, should I take some profits or not? Because there's no shortage of people who will dump on you. And then just to finish this up, I didn't know that they were actually publicly traded. I'm not telling, I'm not advocating for you to, to buy their stock, but it was interesting just how well they've done. Five days, I mean, they're up a whopping 1.6%. Watch out. One month, uh, 4% is pretty good. And then it kind of goes a little sideways. Down 50% in the last six months, but it's up 143 in one year. And then in five years, 70%. So again, when you're looking at this stuff, you're like, eh, it's not so great. When in doubt, 
zoom out, things are gonna be okay. And then as a last little little piece here, if you wanna find uh, CleanSpark, their website's cleanspark.com, very simple. And I thought it was interesting, They're, they are a pretty reasonably volumed uh, Bitcoin mining company. Their hash rate exceeds 26 uh, exahash. Now I'm not a miner, and I don't really know too much about mining. I don't do it. Uh, it seems like a very cutthroat industry as crypto golfer is uh, he in the same position I am. But uh, I was taking a look at it as far as the Bitcoin hash rate. Right now we're at 583 exahashes. So we were maybe topped out here and then we're kind of down. Again, if that's the total amount, Bitcoin hash rate as of September 30th, 3.28 p.m. UTC, 583.97 exahashes. And these guys are pumping out 26 exahashes. What is it, like 5%? It's pretty good. So something to take a look at. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Again, there's also some good news out there. CZ Binance is out of jail. And uh, I just want to take a step, step back and just congratulate him for getting out of jail and just pretty much taking one for the entire team as the government cracked down on the CEO, former CEO of Binance. And he's out after four months or so. And he says some pretty good things here. He just talks about how, you know, he appreciates life. The food tastes so good. I'm sure it's better than jail food. What a luxury to be able to have more than one piece of fruit per day. So if you think you're having a bad day, just remember, there's people who would gladly trade positions with you any point in time. So congratulations, CZ Binance getting out. I like that. So there's some good news as well. But I can't give you all good news because then you'll be full of hopium and you need a little balance. So let's talk about scammers. So we had a great interview, uh, me and Beardy, a couple of days ago. This is on Saturday. We talked about losing big, huge, massive chunk uh, from scammers. But it's not just Beardy. It's a lot of people. There's a crypto whale. He just lost $32 million. You think you're having a bad day? Imagine being that guy or gal lost, losing $32 million. Here's what happened. This exploit was seemingly powered by the infamous Inferno Drainer Scam as a Service software. And what it does is it targets crypto traders by spoofing popular DeFi protocols in order to trick users into signing over controls of the wallet. So instead of going to like uniswap.com or whatever the heck, I don't even know what it is. It'll be like, uniswap.com or uniswap.io or something crazy that is so close that it looks real. Then you go to that site and it's just one letter. It's just one letter or a double letter. Something looks. And of course, if you're a little bit off that day, maybe, you know, you got your fourth kid screaming uh, all night long, or you had a really rough night, or you're just trying to juggle three jobs and you get in there and you're just kind of tired and you do something. It happens, right? So with this one, I just want to remind everybody, Go to the official links as much as possible. My favorite place to get this is to go to CoinGecko, coingecko.com. And if I'm looking for like to buy Ethereum, for example, or to buy Solana, or to buy tomato jackrabbit coin, or whatever it is, if I just go to CoinGecko, type in the, the token, the crypto, whatever else, and I want to see where it's at, I click on this thing called Markets. Under markets, it'll tell me all the trading pairs and where to go. And they label them by centralized exchanges. Sweet, Mary Joe, I got 265. Let me see. Centralized exchanges, centralized exchanges. And they also list them as, like, also as DEXs. I don't even know what the heck carbon is. I don't think I trust it because the volume is 0%. So why would I do that? But again, you can take a look and say, wow, 0% of volume, that's probably a scam. Anyhow. You can go through there, get the official links. And then also is a good, a good thing also is you can find the official websites, official well, wallets if you want to, I guess. What? They only list Ledger. Oh, we'll talk about it in a second. And then, of course, their socials. So be aware, be vigilant. I know it's very tough, but uh, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. And then also, more bad news, uh, FTX distribution. I kept seeing this, like, people posting and posting about how FTX... Uh, they're going to get all their money back, and it's going to start today. No, they're not. It's not going to happen for a while. Here's what's happening. No, FTX distribution payments do not begin on September 3rd. Why is this a big deal? People were so enthralled by this and, and looking so forward to it because they thought, okay, these guys are going to get their money back, and what are they going to immediately do? Bam, just buy a bunch of crypto. Well, maybe, but they're not going to get it back anytime soon. According to the FTX bankruptcy estate, total claims... 
from injured parties top $11 billion as a court hearing to confirm the plan looms. So according to the updated chapter 11 filing, the next court hearing to confirm the restructuring plan is October 7th. Judge John Dorsey of the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for the District of Delaware will oversee the hearing. I hope that works out. If the plan is approved, claimants with claims under 50,000 could, keyword could, start receiving payments by the end of this year. Those with larger claims may not receive distributions until the first or second quarter of 2025. So yes, this sucks, but look at the bright side. At least they're gonna get some of it back. Are they gonna get all their value back? No, it gets even worse. So this is from the FTX creditor. Uh, this gentleman's name is uh, Sonil Kavuri. I think I hope I said it right. FTX creditors are only getting 10 to 25% of their crypto back. Yikes. FTX creditors will only get 20, 10 to 25%, according to newly revised bankruptcy documents. FTX creditor activists explained that the creditors would receive reimbursements according to the petition date when crypto prices were much lower than today. How much lower? A lot lower. To put this into perspective, the price of Bitcoin was approximately 16,000 when the legal petition was filed. Meaning that's what they're gonna get. They're like, oh, we'll give you your, like if you have one Bitcoin that you held there, we'll give it to you, but it's gonna be 16,000 bucks, not 63,000, whatever it is today. Sorry, Charlie. That's the power of bankruptcy and bankruptcy courts. The only people that actually went are the lawyers. I hate to say that, but that's just how it is. And then of course the quote from Sunil says, crypto holders are not whole at petition date, prices as confirmed by the debtors. The United States Department of Justice and Judge Kaplan, many FTX customers continue to suffer from mental distress, panic attacks, divorcers, divorcees, divorces, and suicidal thoughts as their life savings have been stolen and property still has not been returned. And that is why, unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, Sam Bankman-Fried is sitting in a jail cell. I hate to say that, uh, that that's a great thing because him sitting in a jail cell, does that get any of the money back? I mean, it's great that he's there, but in all honesty, I would rather have him outside doing some type of work to make the creditors whole instead of sitting in a jail cell, rotting away, doing absolutely nothing. That's just my stance. Anyhow, I want you to think about that in the comment section. I'm sorry to hear those things. It is what it is. And then to finish up, here's some bright notes because they can't be all gloomy. Uh, tangent. So cold storage wallet, which I think we should have all done instead of putting in an FTX or Mt. Gox or Voyager or Celsius or BlockFi, guilty as charged. We should have just used a cold storage device. Figure out how simple it is to use and used it exclusively. What's great about Tangem is I was being and complaining about this for a while. Why don't you have native staking? Everybody has native staking. Ledger has native staking. Why can't you? Why, why, why? And I talked to them many a time, very polite. And I said, I'd really like this for me and, and the people that I uh, watch my videos. Would you please, please, please do some staking? And they did it. So Tangem is my favorite cold storage wallet. I have a ledger. I just think it's very clunky and old school and I don't really like it, but I still have it, still use it. But Tangem now, you can stay Cosmos, you can stay Tron. And before you make fun of Tron, remember, watch that video from Coin Bureau. 50% of all stable coin transactions are on Tron. I'm not saying it's good. It's expensive and slow, but whatever. But it still happens. And then also you can stake Solana. So right now you've got Solana, Tron, and Cosmos. And I, they asked me today, they said, which one, because I, I was on the phone with them. So they said, which one would you like to have come forth. And it's not like they're asking me like I'm the end all be all, they're just getting like input. And I said, Cardano, if you guys put Cardano on there, a lot of my viewers will love you. You've already got Solana, you've already got Cosmos, do that one. So we'll see how it goes. There is a link in the description for this blog post. I've already done a couple of, uh, of staking and I'm gonna put a video out, super easy, very, I like it. So uh, I'm glad they did it. So thank you to Tangem. And then also, uh, before I forget, World Mobile Token, another Cardano, Binance Smart Chain, now on base, project, uh, DPIN. This is the first day of the migration of World, World Mobile to World Mobile Token X. 
And there's a link in the description, which goes through a video, which looks like this. It's about 12 minutes. It shows you exactly how it's going. And I will say, World Mobile, there was rumors about them um, partnering up with Starlink. And they just released this today. I don't know what to think about it. But if you watch the video, there's two big satellites right there. I don't know if they're going to do that or if that's just a tease. I don't know. But regardless, um, watch that video and uh, for the migration uh, from World Mobile Original to now multi-chain, which I think the uh, future actually is, as they move on to uh, base. And also, they'll still be on Cardano and Binance Smart Chain and their own thing. So that's what's going on. And that's it for today. So look, but a little bit long. Sorry about that. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Now, if you want to stick around, answer all your questions, the best of my abilities, then we'll go out. We'll get out of here. But if you got to take off, take off. It's a Monday. So yeah, we'll see.